Hey everyone, in the news this week, China has banned smoking in schools, although I think the children are still allowed to smoke in the workplace. Now, there's controversy over the music streaming company Spotify, who've decided not to cancel their controversial but wildly popular and lucrative Joe Rogan podcast. Personally speaking, I'm not into that stuff. I get my music the old-fashioned way, you know, pirated MP3s off the internet. And this last week, February 2nd, was Groundhog Day, the folksy holiday from Pennsylvania, made into the brilliant Bill Murray movie about a man reliving the same 24 hours, day after day after day. And the story must really ring very true for the Prime Minister, because once more the papers are full of speculation about how long Boris Johnson will manage to last at number 10. The Groundhog and Punxsutawney predicted that this year there'll be six more weeks of winter, but nobody has a clue whether there'll be six more weeks of Boris or not. This week saw the police report, Aaron Brown submitted a letter of no confidence, and Downing Street saw the departure of five close advisors, but the cabinet do seem to think that it'll eventually go away if they wait it out, and nobody views the Labour Party as being a credible government in rating. This last week at yet another shouting match at the dispatch box, the Prime Minister looked at the opposition bench and made a reference to them to being like Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Although that would have made a much better analogy a couple of years ago when it was Jeremy Corbyn and his friends, because then you could at least make a follow-up joke about the wacky racists. The unfortunate thing is if you look past the stories about suitcases of Pinot Grigio and birthday cakes and photographs of the event, there is actual news going on in the world if you skip past the first few pages of the newspaper at least. You have a possible war brewing in Eastern Europe, Brexit is once again in the news in Northern Ireland, and apparently the UK now has more open food banks than branches of McDonald's. But of course for the BBC, the only real food story that matters is the one about whether Carrie Antoinette let her husband eat cake or not. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.